Why do they do the things that you wanted them to do after they leave the relationship, after you all break up, after the divorce? Why do they do these things for the next person, right? And you wanted this. And so I was sent a video today and the man that did the video, his name is Quinn on YouTube. His YouTube channel is ASSC Direct Channel. He broke it down, he covered everything. And so I wanna add a little bit to it. Here's what happens, and this is phase one. So you say, hey, Leon or Leona, if it's a man talking to his woman because they are narcissistic women, as we know. Hey, Leon, you know, uh, I don't feel like you like me anymore. I don't feel like you love me. I don't feel the love. I don't feel the connection. I don't feel the chemistry. We don't talk. We don't hold hands. We don't cuddle. We're not having sex as much. We don't go anywhere. You know, you sit on the couch, you act like you don't like me. You're bored. You don't speak. You know, you look at the TV. You're on your phone all day long. What's going on? Is this something you need to tell me, Leon? Are you okay? You know, are you planning on leaving me, Leon? Right? So what happens is when you ask those questions because narcissistic people in the love bombing phase, they start off high energy, motivated all over you, you know, all into you. The text messages, the phone calls, you know, showing up early, planning dates, planning weekends. And after a few months, shh, crash and burn, burn out, right? Hit the deck. So what happens is when you ask me these questions, now you make me think about my dysfunctions. My, now you make me think about my childhood. Now you make me think about the people that discarded me, that beat me, that abused me as a child. And now I know that I can't give back, but I tried to do it in the beginning because I was good at it, but I'm only good at it for three or four months. I don't have longevity or staying power. And now you just reminded me, you pushed me up against the wall. Now I have to figure out what I need to do. Now I'm thinking, oh, she's onto me. She doesn't like me anymore. I'm not attracted to her. You know, she doesn't, she doesn't respect me. She don't think that I'm a man. She's going to cheat on me. She's going to leave me. She's going to hurt me too. You know, so now what happens, this is phase one. Now we shift to phase two. I know that you want, I know what you want, I know what you need, and I know that I can't fulfill your dreams, right? You caught me. You got Leon. I'm in a corner. I'm trapped. I'm delirious. I'm afraid. I'm starting to sweat. My heart rate goes up, right? Here comes phase two. Because you called me out, I don't like it, right? Now I become vindictive. I become vindictive, so I'll start reminding you about the things that you can't do. Right. I'm telling you now, well, I'm not happy either. You know, well, you don't hold my hand or you don't cuddle with me. No, and damn well, I'm not a hand holder or a cuddler. Right. You don't do these things. You know, you you don't spend time with me. You don't look in my eyes. So it's now we're going back and forth because now I'm offended. Narcissistic people get offended quick when you call them out. Right. Even though what you're saying is true, correct and right. And what I'm saying is all wrong. I still want to make you feel like you're wrong. And I'm right. This is when the gaslighting stage start, you know. So this is phase two, vindictive. Then the ghosting starts. So now it's like, okay, so she, what, 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 what are we going to do then? You know, and they, they ask some questions in their mind. They're already planning to leave you alone. So the ghosting starts, less phone calls, less text messages. You know, the text messages aren't as juicy. So it starts to dwindle. And then you have less attention that he's going to, he or she going to give to you because they want to hurt you. They want to see you falter. They want to see you cry. They want really want to see you leave them the hell alone and not bring this, these questions up again. So it's, they're less attentive, you know? And so they have the, the ghost scene, they become very vindictive and they're less attentive. And so you start to yearn for that and you either complain more, you'll say more, or you won't say anything because you don't want them to, to become more aggressive or even more upset about it. So this is a phase two, the vindictive ghosting starts being less attentive and then they start to starve you of sex. They start to starve you of, of, of affection. They start to starve you of communication. And so now you start to go into the shell. So you start to backing up and backing up off of them. That's what they want you to do. But that's your biggest mistake. You know, you have to keep going in, not being, you know, not being anal about it, not being aggressive or over the top or mean, but you want what you want. You want what you need. It's a relationship. You know, I was in relationships, but I wasn't relating. And so this is phase two. Excuse me. This is phase two of you calling them out and saying, hey, why did you do these things if you ever talk to the person again? Or you wonder, why, did, why didn't they do these things when they were with me? Now they're doing it with her, you know? And then you ask them, you push them back and make them think. And so now they got to recover, right? They got to recover. They got to get their moxie back. They got to get back together, right? Like, man, she called me out, you know, thinking to myself, she knows who I am. She knows I'm not good. You know, she knows I'm not real about being in a genuine, genuine relationship. She knows I can't commit. You know, she knows there's probably some infidelity going on. She knows there might be something else. So what happens is phase three, this is what you've done. And again, I'm not saying you shouldn't ask your partner these questions. You should. You know, why aren't we kissing anymore? Why aren't we hugging? We don't go out. You don't talk to the kids. 
We don't spend quality time together. You come home and you're quiet. You're pissed off. You're mad. You're angry. You know, you don't touch me. You know, and you don't hug me. You don't compliment me. So what you've done and what you've done when you push them up against the wall, when you push them back on their heels, when you ask them these questions, what you've done is you groomed them, you prepared them, you trained them, and you got them ready to do the things that you wanted to the, for the next woman. And you didn't do it directly. You asked a question. It's like, ooh. So what do they do? Now they, oh, okay. Lisa wanted this. She wanted that. She said this. She said that. So I came in with the love bomb and I got this part mastered. Now all, all I got to do is master the things that Lisa wanted and give them to Karen. So when they, after they ghost you and discard you and give you less attention, right? That's their exit plan. They're going to be ready to go. And now you have groomed them, you've prepared them, and you've taught them how to take care of the next woman. And so when you see them on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, or whatever, and she all happy, right? It's because you groomed him to take care of her like he wanted to be taken care of. And he'll be smiling too because he got him another one, a new supply. And, and it's only a matter of time before he starts dwelling away with the attention, start ghosting her and discarding her just like he did you or just like she did you. Right. So that's what happens. Why do they do what you want them to do for the next person? Right. They just saved it. And then you gave them the knowledge. You gave them the swag. You gave them the confidence to do it for the next person. And that's what happens. All right. Y'all have a great night.